So in this video, we're going to be looking at how we can create a drawing of a steel skeleton frame. Uh, we might use this if we want to try and show a construction method. Um, and in this particular uh, drawing, we're going to be using steel columns and uh, steel beams, as we can see here. And we're also going to be looking at uh, the different ways we can use different connection methods at each interval here. Uh, so to get started then, uh, I'm going to open up uh, level zero on a new uh, architectural template. And when we're in level zero, the first thing we want to do really um, is probably set our, our level. So I'm going to open up elevations and just go into any one of these. I'll probably use south later. So I'll pick this one here and do the usual. Just drag everything out of the way a little bit so it's not in the way of our drawing. And I want to add a level to this. So I'm quite happy with four meters to start off with. Uh, so I'm going to add a level. So up the top here to add a level. Uh, for this one, I'm going to use pick lines and with an offset of... We'll choose 3,500, and then when I click on that one, it brings it up automatically like that. Uh, so that's my levels, and if I go back into level zero, uh, so into here, we're actually going to use a grid system for this. So the grid system is a really good way uh, of setting out our drawing when we're using uh, columns. So I'm going to start on level zero, uh, and the grid system um, I'm going to be using uh, is, is just the standard default uh, six and a half by one. Uh, so I'm going to start off at the top here and come down, and I'll come down to about there somewhere. And then uh, next one I'm going to probably pick up is going to be about, we'll, we'll use five meter intervals for this particular project, but it doesn't matter what they are. It depends on the size of your your particular project. Uh, so once I've got these, got uh, one, two, three going this way. And then from uh, right to left, uh, I want to pick this one up here. Can you see it goes to number four? We actually want to change that. So click into there, I'm going to change that to A. Enter. So when I draw my next one back into grid, uh, I'm gonna, again, I'm going to use five meter grids on this. Uh, so when I pick this one here, you can see it's already changed to B. So I've got one, two, three across the bottom, and A, B, C up the left hand side there. So that's the grid system set up there now. So uh, with that set, uh, I can now start placing my columns. So to do that, we're going to go into structure, and we're going to go into column, and I pretty much like this this one here. If you don't like these ones here, you can go into load family, and you can use your structural uh, columns uh, section within there, and you can start loading in more. But I quite like this one, so I'm just going to use this one here. And um, with this then, so. With here, uh, sometimes it comes up with depth or height uh, into here, and you definitely want it on height. If it goes on depth, it'll actually sink into the ground, so it'll go down, whereas height actually goes up from the level. Uh, and we're going to want these ones to go up to level two. So for this one here then, I'm just going to place the first beam there. One, two, three. And if I open up my 3D, you can see them here. If I spin this around to the correct orientation as to what we're seeing it, uh, that's the three beams we can see in there. And I'm going to keep going back to this uh, 3D view all the time. So back to level zero, uh, and I can see my beams there. If I open up uh, level one, and I'm also going to need level two as well. Uh, when I'm in level two, I can't actually see anything below. So for this, I just need to come down to the extent, view range, and then change the bottom to unlimited and the view depth to unlimited as well. Apply, and then I can see everything below uh, down there. You might also want to change this to fine as well, just to give you some detail. It helps drawing it a bit later on. Uh, so now I've got those beams in place. I'm now going to place some uh, beams going across here at level one. So I go into the level one uh, tab and I'm now going to be producing uh, some beams. Again, I like this this size beam that's in here. It's the only one that's loaded into the template, but you can go into load family and more uh, using structural beams. Uh, so from there, then I'm just going to, from the center of there to the center of there, I just hit the escape key once and then start again from there to there. It just helps not confuse it too much. When I go into 3D, I can now see I've got those at level one. I'm going to do the same at, uh, no, I'm not going to do the same at level two on this particular one. So I'm actually, actually going to be producing um, uh, some apex ones on here. And if I go back to this view here, you can see what I mean by that. So um, I've got this beam coming across here, which is what I've just drawn in. Uh, but this one here, I'm not going to have horizontals. I'm just going to have them coming up at an angle. So in order to do that, if I go into level two, uh, I want to draw uh, a 
again some structural beams and from there to there escape key once and then from there to there again and then when it's 3d these ones here are actually going to come up at an angle this central beam is too high we don't want that one to come up to level two so on when i select that central beam where we've got this um top level just change that down to level one and click apply and then just join those elements there so these beams here now so if i click on this left hand beam here you can see i've got the start off start level offset is at zero this end level i'm just going to change that one to 1500 so that's going to raise the right hand side up 1500 millimeters from the bottom there straight away uh, this left hand beam here uh, this will be the starting offset so 1500 for that one and you can see that one's uh, come up as well like so so we've now got this uh, basic form, if you like, uh, which we now need to connect together. Uh, and then once we've got more connected together on our base plates and everything else, we can then uh, duplicate these across to save us having to draw it numerous times. So to do this, um, depending on uh, what version of um, Revit you're using, it will, depend, and it will depend upon the type of template you're using as well, it will depend upon what you need to do here. So uh, for this one, I'm going to click on this one. Uh, in fact, no, what, what I'll do to start off is get the, the, the stuff in there. So in the structure element, uh, we've got this connection here. But before we, when we click on connection, there's nothing in there. When we click in here, we've got generic connection, but there's nothing there. So uh, when we go into here, we've got this connection here. Then we've got this tiny little arrow to the bottom right-hand corner of it. You need to click on that. And what you need to do is just left-click once on there and drag all the way down and select everything so you can see I'm selecting everything there then click it to add and then click OK now when I go back into uh, a connection into here I've now got all those things in here and then when I click on these um, you can see that they actually tell you what they're going to do um, all the different stuff that they can do so uh, with that then though click on this one hold down the control key and you can see that the plus sign on the mouse comes up and then I can multiple select those once i've done that back into structure into connection open this one up and this is going to be an apex haunch so that's the kind of connection we want so when i click on that it goes like that now depending on what type of um revit you're using whether it's 2020 or 21 or 22 uh, it would depend upon what this looks like so you can see mine there it doesn't have the actual connection it is there it's just hidden at the moment uh, and that's because the default for this particular version I'm using, which is Revit 2022, uh, it won't show it. So if that happens, just um, escape key twice, uh, visibility graphics overrides. And in module categories, go down to S. So just press S on the keyboard. Then come down to uh, structural connections. Click on the plus side, and you can see that none of these are checked. So you won't be able to see the anchors, the bolts, the holes, or anything. So you just want to go through and check all of those. Then click apply and then you'll see your uh, actual connection plate actually come uh, and appear which is great uh, we now need to do the same for these corners here uh, so these ones here so i'm going to click on that and then hold down the control key and click on that and that brings the two together uh, and now go into structure go into connection and this one here uh, will be an be an extended moment it's called where can we find the extended moment end plate that's the one that we like to use on there and i'll do the same for the other one so click on that one and click on that one uh, back in the structure connection and the one extended moment end plate there is uh, so that's what i use for those uh, for this one and this one here um, this will be a clip angle so click on there click on the connection and i'm looking for a clip angle there it is same for this one here and this one here connection and that's a clip angle as well and then for these three here um we're going to be using a double clip angle so this one this one and this one we need to connect all three together and structure connection and then this will be double click angle there we go and then when we zoom in onto these now we can now see we've got um good connections in there everything's bolted um how it should be um uh, we can see the, the connection
connections in there um, and that's pretty much how that's going to look so for the next stage we want to put some base plates on these three columns so here's our first one uh, and we're going to, go to structure connection and for this one we're going to just go use a standard base plate and i'm going to do that for all of these structure connection base plate structure connection base plate there we go and whilst i'm here i just want to do some pad foundations as well uh, so if i go into structure uh, in fact if i go into level zero and do it on here go into isolated uh, would you like to have a family now yes please so we need for that we need to go into our normal families and come down to structural foundations and i'm just going to go for a pad foundation rectangular this one here and the size of that i'll choose just a small one a meter by a meter will do for me for this big project and once i've done that i can now just click once on uh there and then just click into 3d and you can see it in its view there so ignore the um dialog box down there uh, same for this one here just click on the center of it and click on the center of that one and then when we go into 3d we can see we've got these three onto there now I need to duplicate this three times across my grid uh, so with um, it, when I'm in 3d view just get it to about that kind of orientation so it's quite easy just to select all of those components and making sure that you've got all the foundations and all the beams are selected blue once I've done that just go into one of the, the levels maybe level zero it's quite a good one to go into and we're going to use the copy uh, function which is one up here so we'll just click on copy click once on this line here and then click again over here uh, it does take a little while depending on the speed of your computer for it to transfer everything across because it's got quite a lot of information to push across and again we're going to 3d now i can now see and again you can see it's still it's still copying all the stuff across uh, and now it's finished um i've now got this uh, duplicated enough time to go across there so back into uh, level one for instance and i can now start putting them in my beams so back into beam uh, and I can come and start putting these beams in at level one. Like so. And again, back in 3D, you can see these ones here. If I go into level two, I only need them now for level two at the top on these outer ones here. So this one and this one and this one and this one and get back into the 3d on there so that's how we do that part there so uh the next stage really is to um finish up all the connections and again you can go through and use the, the clip angles uh the double side clip angles uh to, to, to all these connections here you don't need to see me doing those again um and that is our our, our main part of our structure done I'll save the roof element uh, or the purlins uh, to a separate video uh, just to keep this video a bit shorter. Um, so look out for the, for the next video um, on how to do a structural steel frame roof purlins.